Hey YouTube, Ethan here. Today we're going to be discussing building the Hydra in Oxygen Not Included. This has been long requested on my channel, so I hope that you guys enjoy it. The Hydra is essentially a superpowered spawn that is going to create oxygen and hydrogen for your colony in Oxygen Not Included. It works exactly like a spawn does, and in this case I'm showing up a full Rodriguez spawn, in that it's going to create a natural separation of the hydrogen and oxygen for you to controllably distribute throughout your base. Now, if you're a new player and you've never built a spawn before, be sure to check out my video, which I'll link in the top right corner of the screen, which is going to explain exactly how to build the spawn and why you should build it for your playthrough. But if you don't want to click off the video, I'll give you a quick TLDR. The spawn is eventually a way for you to use your electrolyzers to separate the oxygen and hydrogen that it creates in a controlled manner where you can distribute those gases throughout your base to where you want them. It also gives you the added benefit of allowing you to run the oxygen Grow cool chamber before you send it into your base so that it's the appropriate temperature for your duplicates or your crops that you're trying to grow. The electrolyzer is something that you're going to transition to very early in your playthrough because eventually your asteroid is going to run out of naturally sourced algae and you're going to need to use water in order to produce oxygen for your duplicates. The SPOM, and this is a full Rodriguez configuration of the SPOM, allows you to controllably separate the hydrogen from the oxygen and send it to where you want to in your base. The alternative to this will be putting the electrolyzer anywhere in your base, which is going to cause hydrogen to freely flow about in your colony and oxygen to come out incredibly hot, which is not going to be good for your crops. So the spawn is something that's essential to build if you're trying to get far into the game. And I would argue that it's also necessary by the very early stages of the mid game part of your playthrough. The Hydra on the other hand is like a supercharged spawn. One of the main differences between the two is that the electrolyzers in the spawn are constantly going to be overpressurized due to the configuration and the limitations of the electrolyzer and gas pressure mechanics in the game. What we're doing with the Hydra is manipulating the electrolyzer so it's creating an infinite storage system just like we discussed in a previous video, which I'll also link in the top right corner of your screen if you would like to check that one out. Basically, we're allowing the electrolyzer to continue to produce oxygen and hydrogen indefinitely without ever overpressurizing, which is going to get you a lot more production out of one electrolyzer than multiple electrolyzers do from your spawn. So why do we build the spawn if the Hydra just sounds so much better? Well, we're going to compare the two in this video, so stick around to the very end to find out what my opinions are on both the spawn and the Hydra. So let's get right into the second part of the video and learn how we build the Hydra. So in essence, a Hydra is just an electrolyzer that we're going to prevent from overpressurizing using the game mechanics. Remember from the infinite storage video that we can use small amounts of liquid placed over a gas vent to prevent it from overpressurizing, which will allow it to continue to work indefinitely regardless of the surrounding gas pressure in the chamber around it. This is exactly what we're going to do with the electrolyzer. However, because the electrolyzer is two tiles high, we're going to have to use two different types of liquids stacked on top of each other in order to get the same effect. If we just use one type of liquid, the bottom layer of that liquid would cause the electrolyzer to become flooded and stop working altogether. So I've already prepared the liquids that we're going to use, and it's going to be crude oil and petroleum. And we're going to use 10 kilograms of each. 10 kilograms is very specific and it's very important because this is exactly how much liquid you're going to get from the contents of one liquid pipe that you're going to be able to route in here in order to get the electrolyzer surrounded with liquid. I'll show you how to do this in a game scenario later in the video, but for now, we're just going to go over the basics. So we're going to take our crude oil and brush it at the base of the electrolyzer. And then we're going to take our petroleum and brush that over the electrolyzer. At first, it's not going to work out very well, and that's because the gas hasn't achieved separation yet. Now, in an endgame scenario, this would be very easy to achieve just by vacuuming out both sides of this chamber. Or if it's not vacuumed out, you can simply have a gas pump on each side and keep vacuuming out the contents of each room until the gases naturally separate and stabilize the Hydra. Because I'm in sandbox mode, I'm simply going to brush into hydrogen on one side and the oxygen on the other. And once we've achieved this separation, the electrolyzer is going to produce hydrogen and oxygen indefinitely without overpressurizing. Once it figures itself out, it will not overpressurize and continue to work indefinitely with zero downtime. So if it's your first time building the Hydra and you see it struggling like you just saw mine do, give it some time to figure itself out after you've separated the hydrogen to one side and the oxygen to the other, and it'll start working indefinitely on its own. Now, if you go through the effort of vacuuming out both your oxygen and hydrogen chambers, like you see here, and you try to start your Hydra for the first time, you're going to get a weird effect where all the hydrogen and oxygen is only moving to the left side, and all of the right side will stay vacuumed. So the fix for this is pretty simple. All you have to do is prime the oxygen side with oxygen and the hydrogen side with hydrogen, and then your electrolyzer will start up without any issues at all because your gases will already be mixed in the correct locations. 
So I'll fill in some hydrogen on this side and I'll fill in some oxygen on this side. And you can see that the amount of oxygen and hydrogen that I used is very minuscule. It's practically nothing on the overlay, only 10 grams on each side. But just doing this small amount of effort will allow your electrolyzers to start working right away and have the gases mixed in the correct locations. So if you do go through this extra effort, you're not going to need to filter the gases when they initially come out of both chambers. That's a huge plus if you just want to get this online and up and running without having to worry about filtering different gases. The hydro that you saw at the beginning of this video that has four electrolyzers stacked on top of one another is just a different configuration of the hydra and it is very easy to make a vertical setup or a horizontal setup as long as you're following the rules for where to put the airflow tiles. The hydrogen will always want to come out on the left side and the oxygen will always want to come out to the right side so you want to make sure that both sides are accessible so the gases can leave the hydra and separate on their own appropriately. If you don't want your hydra to be very tall vertical, you can also make it in a horizontal configuration and stack multiple layers of electrolyzers on top of one another. In this configuration, you can see that the hydrogen is not taking the left path from half of the electrolyzers that are working. Instead, it's taking the right path. And again, this is just the way gas mechanics work in oxygen not included. The hydrogen is going to find the closest hydrogen tile surrounding the electrolyzer that it can use without pushing other gases aside, which in this case would be the oxygen. You just have to make sure to keep the consistency throughout the entire layout and you won't have any problems running your hydra. So if you follow this exact diagram, vacuum out your chambers and prime the chambers with hydrogen and oxygen respectively, you're going to have no problems starting up a hydra that looks just like this. Remember that if you're having any problems, you can always go to the materials overlay and select gas to see how your hydra is working. And if you notice any problems in your build, you'll be able to correct that using this screen. Likewise, not only can you make the electrolyzers in any configuration that you like, but you can also make the chamber as big as you like and it will continue to store hydrogen and oxygen indefinitely without ever overpressurizing. So this is one of the other benefits of the Hydra is that you don't need a separate storage system like you would for a bomb. And right inside of these storage chambers, you can have your gas pumps, which can distribute the gases to wherever you want in your base. The oxygen would preferably be going to a cooling chamber or you can cool it directly inside of this Hydra chamber, which is going to be a lot easier than sending it into a dedicated cooling chamber if you don't want to do that method. You could do something like running radiant liquid pipes through here with very cold polluted water hooked up to a steam turbine and aqua tuner combo, which will continue to cool this oxygen as it's being produced by the Hydra, and then you can send this directly into your base. In just a very short amount of time, you can see that we produced 22 kilograms of oxygen and around 4.4 kilograms of hydrogen. Now, if you've been following my channel for quite some time, you've probably heard me talk about being efficient and trying to maximize the resources that you have in your playthrough so that your colony will last as long as possible and so that you can beat the game. So if we take a look at the overall efficiency and we try to compare these two buildings, and of course I'm talking about the spawn versus the Hydra, you can see that no matter how many electrolyzers that you stack on top of each other with the Hydra configuration, they will never overpressurize and they will continue working at full capacity as long as you have water and power coming into them. This is completely different than the spa where you can see the electrolyzers are constantly being overpressurized because of the gas pressure of the oxygen and the hydrogen that is available in this chamber. And of course this is due to the game mechanics where we're using liquid to prevent the electrolyzer from overpressurizing. You can clearly see that there is one that is way more efficient than the other. So why do we continue to build this bomb if the hydra is just so much better? Well for starters the spa is a lot more beginner friendly in my opinion than the spa. If you're a new player, I would definitely recommend building the bomb over the Hydra if this is your first time transitioning from an oxygen diffuser to electrolyzers. The only thing that you need to know about building the bomb that is somewhat complicated if you're a new player is the basics of gas filtering. Inevitably, you're going to have some oxygen that is being sucked up by your hydrogen pumps and some hydrogen that is being sucked up by your gas pumps. You'll have to learn how to deal with this and separate them when you start up your spawn, but this is very simple to do so using something like a gas filter, or a gas shutoff accompanied by a gas pipe element sensor. And both of these methods are covered in my spawn tutorial. The Hydra, on the other hand, requires a little bit more manipulation of the game mechanics. We're talking about putting two exact quantities of liquid over top of the electrolyzer so that it never gets overpressurized and enclosing it into a very small chamber without making a huge mess in our base. Now, not to say that this is not achievable as a new player, but it's going to be a lot more complicated than just placing buildings down and turning everything on. Even to this day, I still love building the full Rodriguez just because it's so easy to do so and it's so easy to bring online. So it's safe to say that there's one clear winner here when it comes to producing oxygen for your colony and that's obviously the Hydra. It is certainly indisputable combined with an infinite storage method of storing the hydrogen and oxygen that you're producing along with the electrolyzer you're never overpressurizing that this is the optimal way that you should be producing oxygen and hydrogen for your base. But that's not to say that the spawn is bad. In fact, a spawn like this can easily support up to 15 duplicants or even more, 
And as someone who usually plays with around 15 duplicates during their playthroughs, I can attest to this. This spawn will work just fine, and it will take you to the end game if necessary. So with that out of the way, let's get into part 3 of this video and build the spawn step by step so you can see how it is done without the help of sandbox mode. Okay, so we're going to be building a two-story hydra here, and I've staged the materials that my duplicates are going to need to the left, and also the liquids that we're going to be using. Now, when you're building anything in oxygen not included, personally, I find it way easier to build from the ground up. So you kind of want to have a diagram or a sketch of what you're trying to build. You can also work from the top down depending on what your preference is, but I like to start from the bottom up whenever possible. The reason I build this way is because your duplicates will always have access to climb over two tiles worth of material in order to get to everything that they're trying to build in this area. If you make one complete structure from the get-go and expect your duplicates to build it, it's likely that they're going to build themselves into a corner and not be able to get out, so you have to destroy blocks, or they're going to miss something critical, and then you're going to have to open up these chambers to get back in there so your duplicates can finish the job. So start from either the top and work your way down, or the bottom and work your way up. One of the other benefits of working from the bottom up is that your duplicates will always have a floor to work on. This is going to look slightly different than this variant of the Hydra, because I'm not going to include this storage area down here and this storage area. I'm going to try to make it as compact as possible. So I'm going to be cutting it off right here and just having my gas pumps sit in these chambers. So let's go back here. Before we move on to the next step, we want to get some liquid in order to cover the electrolyzer. So this is the first critical part of building the Hydra. There are a few different ways which you can deliver exact amounts of liquid in certain areas when you need to. One of the easiest ways is to run liquid piping over top of the area that you're trying to get the liquid to, and then just destroy the liquid piping, and then you will release exactly 10 kilograms of whatever liquid is inside of the liquid pipe. Another way, of course, is for your duplicates to manually deliver the liquids, but for this bottom layer, I'm going to use the pipe technique. So as you can see, we have two different types of liquid, crude oil and petroleum. First, we're going to get the crude oil over inside the insulated liquid pipe, and I've already built this in sandbox mode, but you can get your duplicates to do the same. I put a liquid bridge at the end because this allows the crude oil to flow towards the inlet of the liquid bridge. If you don't have an inlet, the crude oil will not flow. So now we're going to get our duplicates to destroy this liquid pipe, which is filled with 10 kilograms of crude oil. Okay, so here comes Ashkin. And as you can see, once he destroys the liquid pipe, we now have 10 kilograms of crude oil dispersed at the bottom of this electrolyzer. Now in your playthrough, you can get this to drain back into here by simply putting a liquid vent up here. But since I'm in sandbox mode, I'm just going to destroy it. And now we're going to do the same for the petroleum. So we'll let our petroleum flow to the start of the liquid bridge. And then once again, we'll have that tile destroyed by one of the duplicates. And it's going to put that 10 kilograms of petroleum on top of the 10 kilograms of crude oil. And now this electrolyzer is submerged in petroleum and crude oil. Now we need our duplicates here to complete this chamber. First, we're going to get our duplicates to complete these two blocks, and that's going to seal the electrolyzer into its own chamber. And from here, we can build the second layer of our Hydra. Make sure to give your duplicates a way out and that they don't get trapped in here. If Max finishes building this insulated tile to his left, he's not going to be able to get out. So keep an eye on your duplicates to make sure they don't get trapped, or you're going to have to build extra ladders for them to get back out. So as you can see, building from the ground up is actually very easy, and it allows you to build your whole structure in one go instead of having to delete walls to get your duplicates back into critical areas. Once they finish the liquid pipe and the power wires, I'll show you the second way of how you can get liquid into these chambers. Of course, the second way that you can fill up this chamber with liquids is by using a bottle emptier. The main difference between the bottle emptier and destroying a piece of liquid pipe is that the bottle emptier will always have buckets of liquid at 200 kilograms, so it's going to put in a lot of liquid into a very small amount of space. It doesn't allow you to control precisely how much liquid you're trying to add in similar way that the insulated liquid pipe does. But if you don't want to add all of the crude oil that your duplicates drop into the bottle emptier, you can pause the game midway through the draining process, uncheck the crude oil, and then immediately the bucket of crude oil that is remaining that has not drained will drop on the floor and you'll have a very small amount of oil left in your electrolyzer chamber. And you can do this exact same thing for petroleum. Now, in my experience, it's never hurt to put one whole bucket of a liquid on top of the electrolyzer. So we're going to allow this entire petroleum to drain and the electrolyzer should still work just fine. I've always found that the electrolyzers work to about 100 kilograms of liquid that they're submerged in. But if you start to go above that, you may have issues with the hydro flooding. So just be careful that you don't add too much of whatever liquids that you're using. From here, we can go ahead and seal our hydra. We're going to first seal the very top layer of the hydrogen chamber. And just again, make sure that your duplicates don't get in here and get stuck. This is very easy for them to do so. And they're about to get stuck right now if I don't move them out of the way. And this one's about to get stuck too. 
So I don't know why they prefer to build using the bottom platforms of the structures that they're building, but just be careful that you're keeping an eye on them during this process. Then of course, we have this airflow tile exposed here. So we're going to build a second layer of insulated tile in order to finish this off. And we'll also add a ladder here so they can access this last tile on the far right. Now, if you wanted to do so, you could remove the ladders before you seal this area off. I chose not to do that because this is sandbox mode and I can just delete it myself. But you would want to delete these ideally somewhere around the time where you're just finishing your second layer. And here we go. Jorge is going to finish it off for us. And now we have a Hydra. Let's go ahead and hook up the commodities and the power. Oh, but before we do that, I forgot to attach my vents. In my case, I'm just going to add high pressure gas vents because I'm not using the hydrogen or oxygen for anything in my base. And I'm also going to be adding signal switches so I can control the off and on functions of these gas pumps. I'm going to start with them off. Let's go ahead and hook up our water. Okay, so now it's time to run the Hydra for the very first time. As you can see, when it first fires up, it's going to struggle. You're going to have your electrolyzers over pressurizing and it's not going to work. And you might even feel like you broke something. But just give it a minute and let the gases separate equally on both sides and it'll start to work just fine. As you can see, the top is already working efficiently and we're just waiting on the bottom to catch up. The reason why this is happening is because the gas separation. For the top chamber, the gas has already separated and there's already hydrogen on the left side and oxygen on the right. So this electrolyzer on the top is able to distribute the gases efficiently and thus keep working 100% of the time. Versus the bottom one isn't able to do that because we have oxygen blocking where the hydrogen wants to go. So we're going to have to vacuum this side out until all the oxygen is gone. Now, if you're running this in your base, you're obviously going to have a lot of oxygen coming from this side and these electrolyzers are going to continue to produce the oxygen and you're going to have a very hard time to get rid of this oxygen. So what you can do to alleviate this process is to either cut off the water to shut off the electrolyzers or to pre-install a signal switch in this configuration so you don't have to shut off the water but you can shut off the electrolyzers and then vacuum this room out entirely of the oxygen until there's only hydrogen remaining. You can use the material overlay tab for this and just click the gas setting and then just wait until all the oxygen is gone from this chamber. Once that happens, you can turn your electrolyzers back on or you can connect the water again, whichever you prefer. But like I said, if you forget to do the signal switch method, just go ahead and shut off the water to it. Okay, now that we have only hydrogen on this side, we can turn the electrolyzers back on and we'll go ahead and shut off this gas pump because we don't want to blow out all this hydrogen into the void. And you can see that both electrolyzers are now working at 100% uptime. There is zero overpressure notice for either of these, and we already have 32 kilograms of oxygen on the right side and 5 kilograms of hydrogen on the left. And that's all there is to it. That's all there is to building a Hydra and getting it up and running. So that is the end of our video on how to build the Hydra and oxygen not included. I hope that this video was helpful for you and that you were able to learn how to build the Hydra and you're able to implement the techniques that I showed you into your own playthrough. If you're a brand new player, I still suggest building the spawn first because that's going to be a good building block for you to build the Hydra and more complicated setups in the future. But if you feel confident enough, feel free to jump straight to the Hydra instead. If you made it this far into the video, please leave a rating down below as this helps more people in the algorithm get a chance to see this video. Also leave a comment letting me know if you've built the Hydra before or if this video is going to inspire you to build it for your playthrough. And of course, leave any recommendations for new videos down in the comments below as well because I take the recommendations that you guys leave very seriously and I try to get to every single video idea that I possibly can. I also have a playthrough coming up where you see me build the Hydra and finally, if you're not subscribed, be sure to do so so you get more videos like this one on your YouTube homepage in the future. I do tutorial videos every week for Oxygen Not Included, and you'll never miss a video if you subscribe. So until the next one, I'm Ethan, and I'll talk to you guys later.